Hello all, my name is Krish Naik and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we will be trying to see a technical thing which is basically one hot encoding if in my features I have many number of categories. So this is the question that was frequently asked by many people. One hot encoding is simple. If you just use uh, pandas.get underscore dummies, you are basically able to perform one hot encoding. But just imagine if in one of the feature you have more than 200 categories, 300 categories, how do we perform one hot encoding with respect to that kind of situation? So just to show, show it to you, I'm going to take a data set from Kaggle, which is called as Mercedes-Benz data exploration. And from this, you can basically download it. I've also given the URL over here. Now the next thing is that I'm going to upload this particular data set and I'm going to take only some of the category variables. So here I have one X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6 category variables. I'm going to see this as my head part, okay? So as soon as I see this, these are basically my categories. Now the next thing that I will do is that I'll try to find out how many categories, how many unique categories are present in each and every column, okay? Simple, how many categories are there in each and every column? So for this, what I'll do is that I will write a for loop saying as for column in data dot columns. So I know how many columns are there, right? And I'm going to print the column name and then I'm going to take the length of the data column dot unique. This data dot column will basically give me the values inside my column. And so basically my uh, record values will be given and I'll try to find out how many unique categories are basically present. So I'm printing that. So in my X1 feature, I have 27 labels. In my X2 feature, I have 44 labels. In my X3, there are seven, X4, four, X5, 29, X6, 12. Now just imagine, if I perform a one hot encoding in all of this feature, okay, how many columns will get created, okay? So if I see over here, you can see that I'm writing pd.get underscore dummies, and this is how one hot encoding is performed. I hope everybody knows that. We'll try to see just simple one hot encoding, and then I'll show you how we can perform one hot encoding for multiple category variables, okay? So I'm using get underscore dummy, I'm giving the data inside it, I'm saying drop underscore first is equal to true. And when I do dot shape, you can see that there are 117 columns that is getting created, you know? And this 117 is basically, uh, you can just consider that this column, you know, <clears throat> you're adding more 100, and these are five. Now you're adding more 112 columns addition to this if you are performing one hot encoding. Now this particular problem is fine guys. Now just imagine if in one of your data set, whenever you're solving some Kaggle problem or you're trying to solve one real use case project, right? At that time, what may happen is that in one of the feature, you may have more than 500 categories. Then how you're going to work? If you apply one hot encoding, that basically means that you're basically going to create 499 columns. And always remember as the number of features or column increases, that leads to curse of dimensionality, right? So it may impact your accuracy level. So how do we fix it, right? So let us see how to fix it. Now, there was in 2009, there was a competition which is called as KDD Cup Orange Challenge with Ensemble Selection. And this is the PDF URL I've already given in the Jupyter Notebook. What this team, what these authors actually performed was that they took the most 10 most frequent categories from each feature and for all the remaining feature, they just skipped it. You know, but only for the 10 most frequent uh, categories, they perform one hot encoding. For all the remaining, they just kept it as zero. Okay. So, and when they performed that, they were able to win this particular uh, challenge, you know, with the help of ensemble uh, selection, but the, they applied this kind of thing. And we are going to do the same thing. You know, we are also going to take the 10 most frequent labels only. Again, this count may change. It may be 10, it may be 20. It depends on the number of categories that are present and how those categories, uh, how many number of times the categories are increasing. So what they did, we'll just try to see. The authors limited one hot encoding to the 10 most frequent labels of the variable. This means they would make one binary variable for each of the 10 most frequent labels only. This is equivalent to grouping all the other labels under a new category. That in the case will be dropped. Does the 10 new dummy variables indicate if one of the 10 most frequent label is present as one or not? If it is okay, so for that particular upstream, so let us try to do the same thing. And uh, again, I'm not performing any machine learning thing over here, but this is one of the way. How do you handle, uh, you know, feature that has many category of features, you know, many category of variables in short. So what I'm going to do is that I take the data and I'll take the X2 column. Suppose if I take the X2 column, 
and I say dot value underscore counts. So this will give me how many number of unique categories I have. And then I'll say sort values based on ascending. And I'll just take the top 20. Suppose I'm taking the top 20. Now you can see observe over here within this particular result, right? This AS category has been repeated 16759 times. A category is repeated 496 times. So what they did in the competition is that they took the top 10 result. You know, top 10 result. They converted this into one not encoding. For all the remaining columns, it will be zero. Sorry, for all the remaining categories, it will be zero. It will be zero. Okay, then let, let us try it. Let us try it out and let us try to convert, uh, apply the same mechanism and see how it works for us. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the top 10 and what I'll do, I'll just put x for x in data dot x2 dot value counts, sort values, ascending is equal to false, dot head of tail. That basically means I'm taking the top 10 uh, you know, number of categories that you see over here based on the value count. Okay. And then I'm taking the index part. So as soon as I take the index, this basically gives me the column name, sorry, uh, the uh, categories. Name, okay. So when I see to my top underscore 10, this is my top 10 categories. Perfect. Now, when I do this, the next thing that I will do is that I'll just apply one condition. See this for label in top 10 for each and every uh, categories in the top 10, what I'm going to do, I'm taking the data of label that that basically means data of that particular category and i'm saying that replace with np dot where where data of x2 is equal to label wherever this matches with this particular label replace it with one else make it as zero so this basically means that if i go and show you the uh this top 10 or, or the data underscore label this particular value right dot head of 40 suppose i show my 40 results and this i've basically applied in my x2 just remember guys now suppose this is my x2 column okay so let's see for the 80 okay we'll go and see whether 80 belongs to the top 10 categories you can see over here so here 80 does not come anywhere in the top 10 categories right if i if i see over here, i don't see 80 anywhere okay it does not even come in top 20 also so what it should be for this Whenever I have this 80, since it is not in the top 10, this all will become zeros for that. Okay, see, you can see all it will be zeros. Now, suppose if I want AV, AV is also not present in the top 10 or top 20. Okay, so since I'm doing it for top 10, so this will also become all zeros based on this condition. See this condition, how it says data of label. Now, label will be either one of these values. I'm saying that np.where, that is numpy.where, if I say data of x2 is equal to label. Data of X2 is label, whether those are matching, right? And this X2 is basically the top 10 results. If they are coming in the top 10, then only I'm going to make it as one. Otherwise, I'm going to make it as zero. And that is what it is happening. Let us take one example. Suppose N is there, okay? This N category, what kind of one hot encoded will happen to this, okay? And you can see for N over here, it is coming as one. For that, we'll go and see whether N is in the top 10. So here, yes, we can see that N is in the top 10. Okay, it is somewhere around 7th or 6th, 7th. So what I, I can do is that this n will basically become 1. Okay, see these are the additional columns created and this is just created for the top 10 categories. guys. Okay, and this is how for each and every uh, categories this kind of matrix will get created. Okay, you can see this is how for each and every category the matrix will get created. If it is in the top 10, it will be in 1. Otherwise, it will be 0. That's it. That's a simple condition. Okay, so now we are making the 10 binary variables. So these are my 10 binary variables. If you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that is what we do in one not encoding, right? So this was pretty much good. Now, what I will do is that I have to apply this in my X1 column, X2 column, and X3 column. That, that basically means take the top 10 category repeated most frequent feature and convert that into dummy variables, right? So for that, I'm creating a function. The first parameter that I'll provide is my dummy variable sorry, data frame. And second is basically my column name and top 10 X levels. So which are my top 10 frequency categories? Okay. And then I will just apply this for loop where I'm actually replacing wherever this value matches with one, otherwise zero. And here you can see after reading over here again, I'm trying to read from fresh and using the column. And for X2, if I want to do, I'll just call this function, provide my data, provide my X2, see my top 10. Top 10, you know, I've calculated it over here, right? The top 10 for X2 is this. Similarly for X1, for X3, you can basically calculate and you'll be seeing over here. So this is for X2. The previous one was for X1. Now, you, similarly, you can 
create x twos like this. So here is your additional categories that is created. Now you're limiting each and every column to ten categories, ten new categories, ten new dummy variables. So you are restricting. You are restricting it. The count will not increase that much. Okay. So top ten based on that, you are just putting it up. Afterwards, you can drop this category features x one, x two, x three, x four, x five, x six. After you apply for each and every feature over here, which has multiple categories. So here, here is with respect to s two. Here is with respect to x one. Again, you can see x one. All the things are added. Here is with respect to all the other features. Similar, you can do x three, x four, x five, and x six. And maximum, you'll you'll be able to see that. Uh, you know, if you have in one category more than five hundred, okay. Uh, then hardly you are just adding 10 more columns right in the, into the data set but now let us see some of the advantages and disadvantages of this so advantages one hot encoding of top variable what are the advantages? it is straightforward to implement definitely it is straightforward to implement does not require hour of variable exploration you don't require right which variable is playing an important role which is not playing does not expand massively the feature space now see we are restricting the number of dimensions that basically means that the course of dimensionality or accuracy will definitely be better. Okay. What are the disadvantages? Okay. Does not add any information that may make the variable more predictive. Does not keep the information of the ignored labels. That is pretty much forward, right? Straightforward. It is not keeping up all those particular information. It is skipping up all the un unnecessary things. Now, one more, many most important point why uh, this pretty works well. Because understand, guys, from this, if I see the top 10 or top 20 frequent, right? I can consider the other other uh, categories as noise data because in a data set there will be some amount of noise data which will not always be very very efficient of, for the output variable okay so it may not be able to predict a good output feature with respect to that so by applying this you are actually removing the noise in short because those are not repeating right the, those are not repeating uh, so because of that, you just take the most frequent uh, categories that are basically available in the data. So I hope you like this particular video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Please uh, make sure you learn these things. Please do let me know if you have any question. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you, Maninda.